This is Keys to the Shop, episode 362, how to handle growth in your coffee shop. Well, hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. My name is Chris DeFurio. I'm your host for the show. I'm always happy to have you along here, and I would love it if you would subscribe to Keys to the Shop. That way you'll always be updated with new episodes as they come out. And don't forget that you can also listen to Keys to the Shop on Spotify and even YouTube at the Keys to the Shop YouTube channel. And uh, I probably am going to be doing some interesting things with YouTube pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. In addition, if you would share these episodes with a friend or with your team or um, people who you know could benefit from the content of our interviews and the topics we explore, that would be awesome. I thank you so much for everybody who already does that. But it's the number one way this show grows is through sharing it and more people can get exposed to what keys to the shop is all about so thank you all for that now keys to the shop on top of doing this podcast also offers consulting and coaching for you and your coffee business to help you manage all that goes into running a great cafe the people the quality the operations and everything in between it can be overwhelming but my goal with keys to the shop consulting is always to offer you a clear path forward, whether you're just starting your first coffee bar or you're an existing cafe that wants to level up your excellence in all of those areas and more. And I would love to come up with a custom plan for your cafe and your situation. Just email me, chris at keystotheshop.com, and we'll set up a free discovery call and talk in detail about what's going on. Again, that email for Keys to the Shop Consulting, chris at keystotheshop.com. Com. Now, when we talk about coffee, we all imagine exactly what that coffee has to offer in terms of flavor and how we want the customer to enjoy it. And so it's always our goal to you know, coax as much out of that coffee as possible. And one of the best pieces of equipment that's around right now to do just that for your coffee is the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. It is revolutionizing what you can expect from a batch brewer because through its SCA award-winning technology, it gives you incredible precision and control over the extractions of your coffee like you've never seen before. Your customers are definitely going to notice a difference. But not only does it change the game for batch brew, but it also increases your efficiency, productivity, and profitability by making batch dice lattes, batch cold brew, and tea, all of this out of one machine that's amazing to look at, easy to train your staff on, and I think that you should check them out over at groundcontrol.coffee. If you're looking to enter into a new level of coffee appreciation, then I think you should look into getting a Ground Control Cyclops Brewer for your coffee shop. Again, go ahead and visit them over at groundcontrol.coffee. One of the things that I love about working behind the bar is watching people uh, see a drink that's prepared well, presented to them. It's that moment, that handoff that baristas live for, especially if there's latte art on it. And when people order a plant-based beverage, they're expecting the same kind of moment in their drink. And that's why I love the barista series from Pacific because it is created for baristas and tested by baristas to make sure that it provides those moments for the customer and for the barista stands up to the heat from steaming, creates great texture for latte art, and keeps the focus on the coffee. Truly an amazing product. Go visit them over at pacificfoodservice.com to get samples and try it for yourself. If you really want to serve your plant-based customers well, then I recommend you use the Barista Series from Pacific. All right, everybody. Well, today I wanted to talk with you about how to handle success in the cafe. The idea here is that we're not always going to be struggling. At some point, we're going to start to see business pick up. We're going to start to see um, those slow shifts get faster. People are going to buy more, and we're going to start feeling the pressure from that success. And we all want that. And we spend so long sometimes planning about like, well, one day we're going to make a lot more money. We're going to make a lot You know, it's not going to be slow in the cafe anymore, but we don't often plan on what needs to change about the way we run ourselves or our team or our business in the midst of those changes. And a lot can change within a year or two years uh, that I think will, if you're not paying attention, you're going to be basically trying to run your coffee shop like you did when it was slow, but now it's 
not slow anymore. And that's where people start to get into trouble. And there are some key things that I think you need to focus on in order to transition to a better way of operating as you iterate your model uh, in, in, as your business changes, right? And there are about four things that I wanna cover in our conversation today. I feel these things are foundational and there's probably going to be more things that we you know talk about as we talk through these four areas that i believe are critical for handling success but with that said i think growing as a company doesn't mean changing everything now there are going to be things that you add to your company later on but if you've started it the right way a lot of what you need to do in order to be successful later with uh, more business and expanding has to do with reinforcing certain things that you started with and growing them and making the foundation strong to support the weight of what is being built. So entering into this, I'm not saying that you need to just completely change your business once you start getting more business, but I think you need to pay attention to the fact that you could be so busy uh, focusing on just surviving and you know responding and reacting to the inputs from outside sources, customers and opportunities that you neglect to care for the foundation of your business. And that's where a lot of these tips and suggestions are, are coming from. And the idea that, you know, embrace the growth, embrace the opportunities, but simultaneously, develop an urgency for caring for the basics and caring for these foundational areas. Number one on the list here is that you need to reinforce role clarity. A lot of what we end up doing behind the bar looks more like chaos than a choreographed dance where we have planned our moves. We already know what we're expecting our neighbor to do, our peer to do. Uh, we have role clarity in the beginning. Usually we start with everybody kind of does everything where you know, uh, you're working at a slow shift and it doesn't matter if somebody says, I'll get that cappuccino or you know, I'll make that blended drink or I'll make that sandwich and that kind of stuff. And it, and it works, it's fine. But as you get busier, you realize you, you're gonna be wasting a lot of steps and, and you can't just base your model for the future business on this all hands, everyone do everything model uh, that you have now. So you have to divide your labor to stations and responsibilities that those stations have and start to really focus on, okay, at first we had a bit more of a loose idea of who was doing what. We could get away with it because we weren't as busy. But now that we're busier, it's more important for us to be clear about who's doing what. And so the margins for error start to get smaller and smaller when it comes to clarity as you get busier. So your expectations of somebody working at the POS station or the espresso station or the blender station, whatever your coffee bar configuration looks like, those things need to be clarified, revisited, uh, and I think it needs to be collaborative too because the people working those positions become expert in both the what, what's effective and what's not effective, what's dysfunctional about it, and would love the opportunity to help you as the owner create a better version of the job description for somebody who works that station. I've always said this about standard operating procedures or, or policies or anything that you have as a, a codified way of expressing what needs to happen in your coffee shop. The needs of the business will change. The needs of the people within the business will change. And so as you grow, as you take on different opportunities, more people want what you're giving, it's going to be very important that you reinforce role clarity for your baristas, your management. And, and, and that's another thing is, I, as I mentioned it, management. A, a manager is going to need to uh, adjust what they do because of how the business has changed. And if you're getting more business, by the way, you should be looking at higher compensation for your baristas and for management too. Uh, as a result of this, naturally the work is going to get harder and harder. And if you adjust the expectations of the role to increase uh, workload, 
and uh, increase uh, your expectations for people's flexibility at the same time, which is usually what happens as a business expands, um, especially because you know we, we feel a certain um, tinge of fear as, as things start to get busier. We just wanna look to other people to say like, okay, you guys need to help me here and we, we give more tasks to people, but oftentimes we don't think about compensation as a result of that. So make sure that that's part of the equation here. If reinforcing role clarity as you gain business and grow your business uh, involves more work and just harder, different work, you need to think about how they are viewing it from their perspective. It's really likely that for them, they're thinking, well, I'm doing more stuff now and it's so much busier and it's so much more draining to do this work. I'm not making more necessarily. Now, I know there's tips. Tips will increase. That's part of it. But I think it, it, it is always one of the things that you need to um, have as a mindset is how much can you pay your employees versus how much can you get away with paying them? So think about that when you talk about role clarity and adjusting what the business needs, how we need to show up in our roles for it, and how we need to be resourced and compensated. Now, speaking of resourcing, that's the next tip. As you increase your business, you need to amp up and increase your communication both ways. We talk a lot on the show about establishing a platform for feedback, developing a feedback culture. Part of the institutions of your business need to be things like one-on-ones and channels for communication that are reinforced verbally and in writing where it's just, it, people think that, you know, this is their passion. They really want to hear from us because it's a consistent through line that they identify with you as a leader. And in the beginning, communication is really effective. When you're small and you don't have as much to do, you can talk to people, you can fire off a text and put, you know, have a text thread, but you maybe need to move from a text thread to something like Slack. But because there's more going on and maybe even more people involved in the operations, you're gonna have to tend both to the communication platforms, which means that you're going to have to maybe change uh, some of the platforms to hold the kind of communication that you need to uh, have established in your shop. Uh, but you're also going to have to make sure that what you communicate in those threads and in the on, and on those apps is clear and detailed and precise and well thought through and frequent and has a rhythm and that you are following through with things that you say you're going to do. Um, you are soliciting feedback and staying in touch with people. It's really important that you amp up communication when you start to get busier. And don't let it fall by the wayside because you're busy and you assume that everybody knows what to do. It's really critical to reinforce communication because people are going to have questions. And even if they mentally understand what's expected of them. I think communication not only is about knowledge and information, it's also about relationship. It's also about establishing in the mind of the people being communicated with that you are there and that you have not abandoned them and that you are focused on them as the priority and not just pushing out coffee. It's easy for a team to start to feel like they're being ignored because we get really, really busy. And that's not the intention oftentimes of, of leaders, but that's the byproduct of not tending to communication. And I think you just need to assume that as you get busy, you just need to do this more frequently and increase your ability to be effective in your communication. Now, something else I'm gonna say about this is that we need to not only amp up the communication that we have, with our staff, again, I'm going to uh, sort of highlight the idea that we have different tiers of leadership and as an owner, you're going to really have to make sure that you are communicating well with your management team and paying attention to their needs and assume that there are going to be things that are expected of you and increase in expectations that happen as your business picks up and that not all of the um, 
weight of what's needed for the business is going to be absorbed by your management team simply because you have them. Now, if you're a new business, you might not even have managers. And that's another thing, like as you gain um, in business and grow, you're going to have to bring in other people to help you run the business. So one of the changes is going to be that maybe that you install a manager, somebody to assist you in the communication process. And that is a way of amping up communication uh, and keeping those channels uh, clear and open uh, where one person might not be able to do all of those things. You cannot, everyone says, you know, I wear so many hats and that's great, but you're not a hat model, you know? This is temporary. It's supposed to be temporary. And if it continues for too long, what ends up happening is it becomes your identity and you're less likely to delegate, you know, five, six, seven years down the road when you've become so used to wearing all these hats. And it's normal to you, but honestly, you know, with all those hats on your head, it looks kind of funny. So amping up communication might mean that you need to delegate some authority to other people so that that clarity of communication and information and and keeping channels open happens a lot more effectively. Now, here's another thing that you're going to have to focus on as you grow. I believe that it's your role to bring up problems and solutions when you take on opportunities. What this means is as you start to put out marketing efforts for uh, the afternoon slump, it's not good enough to simply hope that you get more business and pay for ads on Facebook or you know do a lot of reels and put out some specials and, and, and all that stuff. That's fine and we can all do that and we all do end up doing that. But are you looking at what's going to be needed if you are successful in that? What are the problems that could arise if during the slow time, a bunch of people come in with your coupon and want to redeem it? Have you told your staff about that? Have you um, prepared them with the resources they need to make all of these different items that you're you know, trying to uh, promote to the community? You know, what about farmers markets? If you start doing farmers markets as an opportunity to grow your business and the exposure of your brand, but you know, it, it makes it so that the openers have to brew a bunch of coffee into Cambros in the morning, uh, have you solved the problem of where those Cambros go, how to clean them, you know, creating a system for where they go on the floor or on a counter so that they're not near the floor? Um, there's all sorts of different things you've got to think through more than just the opportunity itself. How will this go? How will I resource my team? Bring up these problems then, and then have solutions preemptively so that you're just not caught off guard. I see a lot of people just throw a Hail Mary in terms of uh, marketing and ideas. And then, you know, like I've said on the show before, they praise the resourcefulness of their staff who are just blindsided by this idea and, and all these people coming in. And it feels like a slap in the face. Like you went out there, you drummed up all this business, you didn't prepare for it. And now we look foolish. Um, but then what you hear back is, all oh, right, man, that was crazy, but good job team, you know? And, and I just want to be like, I don't want to hear a good job. I wanted to hear about this before it happened. So that is part of it is bring up problems and solutions preemptively. Try to think around corners and say, if we continue down this path, what are the natural consequences good and bad, and how can we prepare ourselves and our team and our space to handle this in a way where we all feel cared for and the customers end up feeling like, man, these people have been doing this forever. It's like, you know, no stress. And that brings us to our last little uh, tip here for handling success as you, you know, grow your business. And that is to not stress about stress. 
Uh, we've talked about this on a shift break before. I wanted to include it here. You know, Kelly McGonigal talked about this on a TED Talk a while ago about how stress is just your body's way of preparing you for an event. And you can trick your mind by telling yourself, I'm excited, not I'm fearful. So you have a choice. I'm fearful or I'm excited. And I had to do this uh, a while back when I was doing public speaking. Oftentimes I would feel pretty uh, nervous about getting up there. My hands would sweat. And, you know, I've talked on the show in previous episodes about how I've had panic attacks and, and anxiety type of things in the past. And one of the things that has helped me get over that is practicing the idea that stress is there as a tool uh, uh, to help me get more excited about what I'm doing because what's about to happen is exciting and I'm participating in it. And I can put a smile on my face and be prepared for kind of the unknown, you know. Um, I was at the Craft Brewers Conference. I was invited to speak there um, about uh, culture and uh, crafting culture. And, you know, it was not a coffee conference. <laughs> and there was hundreds of people in the audience. And it was there was a lot of people. And I hadn't spoken to an audience that large before. You know, I've been speaking at Coffee Fest for a long time. But one of the things that I, I remembered was, you know, I had a lot of confidence in my own lane. This was different. But the practice of considering stress as an asset and not as a liability was what got me through it, not only got me through it, but helped me to thrive in the midst of it. And so you as a leader need to know that stress and tension is just kind of an ever-present uh, part of business and operations. It's just like the bitterness in coffee. Anybody who's not used to coffee will comment on the bitterness. And this is why condiment bars are so well used <laughs> in coffee bars is because people are not used to that bitterness. But you, you notice as people start to investigate coffee more and their mind starts to shift around coffee and the story of coffee, they, they start to ignore, physically ignore the bitterness of coffee and regard it as sort of an ever-present backdrop to a more interesting uh, array of experiences beyond just beyond it. So the blueberry notes and the, you know, <laughs> all the notes, right? It, and I think it's similar when you experience tension in running a business. So much of our time in the beginning is based on how to get rid of stress, how to get rid of tension rather than how to use it and how to just get used to its presence as an opportunity uh, to to create something beautiful as a motivation, as an energizer, and not as a demotivator. So just like a guitar, you can't play the guitar without tension on the strings. And you can't run a business without there being some kind of a, a tension between you know, supply and demand and the needs of your staff and the, the, the problems that come up on a day-to-day -day basis. There's going to be that stress. We just need to accept it. And as you increase in your business, you have opportunity when it's slow to start developing a mindset around stress that allows you to handle more when it's busy and do it more expertly so you can say yes with more confidence instead of kind of sabotaging your success by saying no because you know it's going to stress you out and we haven't practiced how to just kind of handle that stress uh, in the early years of the business. And so don't stress about stress use it, let it energize you and excite you and your team. And I found that personally pretty helpful speaking uh, personally as somebody who has dealt with a lot of anxiety in my own career and past. Um, I, I hope that's helpful for you as well. So I really hope that this whole thing, this whole conversation today has helped spark some ideas about what you need to do right now is you might be in a various stages of your businesses. Maybe you're just in the beginning and you're about to take your next step into something new. You can apply all of these things over and over again at each stage of your business. I really think it comes down to intentionality and mindfulness at each stage and being curious and making sure that 
you're, you're just tending to the foundation. Again, like we began our conversation today talking about tend to the foundation of your business and allow it to expand and grow and allow yourself to expand and grow with it. So thanks everybody for tuning in. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback about today's episode, I would really love to hear it. Reach out chris at keys to the shop.com. You can also use that email to inquire about keys to the shop consulting. If you have any opportunities or projects that are happening in your business and you need some counsel, uh, you need somebody to walk with you through the process to help you gain clarity and find solutions going forward. I'd love to see what we can do. Again, that email for keys to the shop consulting, chris at keys to the shop.com. And one of the places you can hear me talk about subjects like this and a whole array of other coffee professionals talking about subjects that will help you run a great coffee shop is Coffee Fest trade shows. Coffee Fest has been going on for 30 years now, and I consider them the number one place to go if you want to be resourced and equipped to run a great coffee shop. There's free and accessibly priced trainings, workshops, panels, seminars. There, of course, is the trade show floor where you get to interact with vendors to help you supply your coffee shop with the best products and equipment around. Lots of art competition, cold brew, and of course, the coffee community. So a lot to experience. We're going to be in uh, Los Angeles coming up here uh, at the end of August and then Seattle the end of September, and I'd love to see you there. So go to coffeefest.com and register today. Use the code KEYS to get 50% off your registration for you and your team for 2022 shows. Again, that's KEYS to get 50% off your registration over at coffeefest.com. So with that, that is the end of our episode. Thanks everybody again for listening to the show. Don't forget to subscribe, share these episodes with a friend. And as always, I hope that this episode has truly given you keys to the shop.